shall we talk about the direct delicious little developer direct so if, if you didn't know the uh, xbox uh, this time last year did a new thing called a develop direct where they essentially mm. just showed off some some games that are coming out for the rest of the year and that's where they shadow dropped half our rush um they, yes, did the, yeah. they did the same thing this year no shadow drop unfortunately i was hoping for one but they did touch on some new first party games coming out this year including the likes of indiana jones hellblade avowed uh era history untold and then mysteriously visions of mana from square enix which was was that the big surprise because i i don't know it seems very left field not not in a bad way um it was it was kind of like um yeah I, I guess it was just one that wasn't on the roster um and so like unexpected but it was also not like a really big thing I is think. it part of game pass or not because it didn't look like it was I, I it didn't they didn't announce it as part of it no. but assume now given that it was there like that's probably in the works i would i, I mean why I else know. would it be there but that was you know my, I mean? my big question where this is a first party hey all of these games made by xbox all of them on game pass also here's a square Enix game and i was looking at those logos and splash screens at the end and i saw no game pass anyway so i was like this feels, no it was just felt yeah. a bit strangely placed but it's coming to xbox for those uh, fans who love visions of man and want a modern take note on an xbox console of all places i don't know if visions of man has ever been on xbox so there you go uh yeah it's coming to playstation but um I, I don't know if like a mana game has been on xbox before like secrets of mana or something i i don't know i didn't realize that that series spans like 17 games that's kind of it's, insane it's um, up there with final fantasy and dragon yeah. quest it's like one of those many square next titles that have just been around for it's got the heritage decades. Yeah. yeah so outside of um visions of mana we got like the five games that were I guess revealed to be at the show, and those were the five games that were shown at the show. So, first up was Obsidian's Avowed, which is the the sort of like Skyrim ish RPG that was actually announced back when the Series X was first revealed. So this has been a long time coming, and I think the first time we saw gameplay for that was last year, and it looked very different in sort of tone and I would say color. Yeah. Then the reveal trailer suggested, uh, but we got a a greater look at it now. I'm I'm not super sold on it. I won't lie. It's the idea is like this RPG that looks a lot like Skyrim or a Bethesda title, but that mixes both melee and magic combat on like the same uh, plane. So they showed off having like a pistol and a wand, or a sword and a wand in mm. each hand, and using those two things in in uh combat uh i thought the combat looked a bit like slow and stilted and not mm. that interesting i don't know what your thoughts were i actually that. missed this trailer <laughs> i joined uh, okay i joined the showcase late but from what i have seen doing a bit of a catch-up it reminds me so much of skyrim um yeah tons um, which is just hilarious because like i'm sure it's not at all like i mean obviously there's there's overlap in themes and 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 um but it's just funny because coming from the uh, xbox who now own both it is a bit like whoa <laughs> it's, it's a little, yeah. little bit similar to that other game you guys own um so i, I don't know it's um i'm hoping it's really good i know there's a lot of hype you know, from that initial reveal trailer, it's like, oh my God, Obsidian mm, making mm. this game. Holy shit. To now, I a think because people... especially then, like people were like, oh, Microsoft's making a Skyrim and they didn't own Bethesda <laughs> then. So it was like, oh. <laughs> Just actually wild. And so there was a miscommunication. Someone in Microsoft yeah. <laughs> saw that comment going, oh, you know what? We're going to buy Skyrim. And like, Damn it, <laughs> I'll Francis. show you. We I'll still, show you. We're making a vow. <laughs> it's the same game. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's, um, I, I hope it's good. Um, game, I hope game, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it could be cool. Like Obsidian has made one of my favorite RPGs ever in Fallout New Vegas. So like mm. they know how to make first person RPGs for sure. And, you know, they've done a lot with Pillars of Eternity, you know, which is more in the vein of like a Baldur's Gate 3. 
Um, but they've been building complex RPGs for a very long time now. So and more more yeah, recently, we'll see. in a completely left field game, they did Grounded. Um, oh right, yeah, I keep forgetting that they did that. Yeah, who? No, I'm getting them completely mixed up. Who did? Um, oh God, I've gone blank on that bloody game now. The one that came out. Oh, it's the end of last year, the year before the it was Obsidian, the the pen, the the RT one, the story oh, pen, pen, pentiment. Pen, pentiment. Oh my god, sorry, it was Obsidian. Just, it was yeah. Obsidian. Okay, so they've they've done yeah. a couple other games. Um, yeah, recently, and they've, they've which is kind of cool. They yeah. they've allowed pockets of their studio to be turned into these like small strike teams for smaller games, which yeah. I think keeps the studio going. You know, especially keeps people happy as well because they feel they can still be creative um, yeah. even if they're not keen on working like on a big game, yeah. uh, so to speak. So that's, I just yeah, could, not that's think, cool. could not think of Pentiment. It was like penultimate. <laughs> penultimate. I mean, close, close. <laughs> that's not it. I knew there was pen. Now, what did we see next? Was it uh, old Hullblade? Oh, so sorry. Avowed is out in oh. fall of this year. Fall, so yeah. that's like August, September time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hellblade um, 2 finally got a release date as well after many, many, many years of not having one. It is coming out on May 21st, I think. That's correct, yeah. Um, I'm very keen for this game. I played Hellblade maybe five, six years after. No, wait, that, maybe that's too long. But I played it a long time after its initial release. Really enjoyed it and, yeah, keen to see where they take the sequel. It looks visually gorgeous yeah it um, looks absolutely it's... stunning like what a visual showcase this is looking mm. like for the xbox um uh, it is interesting i mean not in a bad way but this is going to be a, a similarly like shorter narrative led experience so mm. they say around the same length as the first game which was what six to seven hours yeah if i'm not mistaken um but what caught my attention was that they said they'd re uh redesigned the combat from the mm. ground up to be a far more visceral and hard hitting experience. So yeah, I guess if you didn't vibe with the combat in the first game, which to be fair was not the full focus of that game, mm. um, there is seemingly a bigger emphasis on that this time around. Yeah. So nice. No, that yeah. it looks really cool. I'm glad we got a release date because again, this is a game that was teased even before the Series <laughs> X came out. So it's about time An this actual this lifetime came out, ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's coming out and then after this we got uh, what was it oh, this is I think a, it was Oxide oh, this, Games this, this, oh no this, Visions, this, of, Visions Manor. of Manor okay. cool. they sl slotted that in somewhere and then yeah this is Oxide Games uh, is it Ara and History Untold yeah Ara sorry. so uh, Oxide Games is made up of veteran um, civilization Sip devs uh, Devs, yeah. And um, you can definitely tell because this looks like civilization, like yeah. through and through. Um, I, I remember I was watching this while on the GameSpot Slack and people who are really into civilization there were like, all of these things that they're claiming are like new mechanics are all just things they're renaming from Civ. Like <laughs> mechanically, this is all the exact same well, thing. So well, one yeah. thing they said, which I thought was interesting, and I'm hoping you can correct me if I'm wrong, Civ is turn-based, right? Like I take my turn, you take your turn. Or Yeah, it's like 4X, yeah, Because one thing they said, which immediately made me go like, oh, okay, that's the difference, is that uh, turns happen simultaneously, if that makes sense. So it's like you and I will both do something and then like it'll action the turn. It happens at the same time. It's not like you waiting for me to do something. We both make moves and then the next turn happens we both make our next move, if that makes sense. I think that does happen in server. Does as it well. happen in server as well? Because I, yeah. I saw that. I, was I think like, it's turn-based in like your decision-making, but the uh, way it plays okay. out is sometimes like okay. simultaneously. Because yeah. I thought, oh, okay, that, that seems different. I don't know how it works, but I, okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, I have a very, very limited knowledge of Civ. I only played a little few campaigns in Varsity with friends like over days. But yeah. if I recall correctly, that was a thing that happened as okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, again, this is a, this particular genre is, is something I have very little experience in. So do not take my yeah. word or insights <laughs> too hard here. Yeah. Uh, that's also coming out in the fall of this year. Yeah. 
Um, and then mm-hmm. the big final game um, was Indiana Jones, Machine Games Indiana Jones. So these are the developers behind Wolfenstein. Um, and surprise, they're making a first-person Indiana mm-hmm. Jones. Uh, with, which is with the likeness super interesting of me. Harrison Ford, which is also also interesting, very yeah. surprising to me because I, I I couldn't I was thinking before the showcase they had like had we actually seen a character model and I don't think we had and then it showed Harrison Ford I was like oh okay yeah. this dude's making bank on this character <laughs> I guess or, it makes sense given that this game is supposed to sit between two of the films Raiders of the Last Ark and the mm. Last Crusade. Yeah. As opposed to, I, I thought the, the even, avenue that goes like whole new sort of timeline. Like a reboot, for Indy. yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I, I think, you know, first person view looks really cool. Like seeing mm. Indy use his whip and you, you, there's a lot of like stealth focus gameplay. Um, and you've got like, you can use things around the environment to distract enemies. You can use your whip to, you know, pull them mm. towards you. You've got a gun. Uh, but then there's also moments where it pulls into third person, like when you're climbing, yeah, um, or taking like zip lines. So that's pretty interesting as well. Um, yeah, yeah. It, I, I think it looks fun. I think it looks like very uncharted, like a um, hundred uh, percent. That's exactly what I said yeah. to Lenska. I mean, so for those of you who don't know, it's it is called Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which is yeah, arguably bad the blandest name you could give. <laughs> And in, anything attached to Indiana Jones, but it is funny that um, from a gaming point of view, we've we've now arrived at a point where we've got an Indiana Jones Indiana Jones game that is decided against third person for a first person, and that's my immediate thoughts as well. It's first person Uncharted and Tomb Raider. Um, mm. Call it what it is. Mm. That's exactly you. You solving puzzles in tombs, hunting for treasure from a first point first person point of view um I, i'm yeah. keen to play it like this is this is the perfect example of why game pass works because i can tell you i probably i like indiana jones but i wouldn't rush out to buy this day one but the fact that it's yeah, on same. game pass a hundred percent i'll try it i'll play it yeah um, I, I i'm don't not know. the biggest like indiana jones person but listen like, we I... will not talk about you having not seen any of the movies <laughs> I, I completely get Leave where you learn. Uh, just for those who don't know, Alessandro con- confessed this um, <laughs> uh, on, on our Discord. Never, this never watched any good of the God, films. Good God, it made them. piss so many people off. I, w- I will say, so many people. Tri- triggered by me saying that when we were watching the showcase, Lenska asked if this is like a male Tomb Raider. And I was like, listen, <laughs> Indiana Jones came along before Lara Croft. Okay, don't, don't Fair be, play. Don't be saying things <laughs> like this. <laughs> Uh, and that's it was, play. It was like hang on have you not seen indiana jones no it's like oh what a way for the marriage to end am i right <laughs> <laughs> just like that you're like we've got a couch we've got a tv sit down <laughs> listen we're gonna watch all of these uh look i think i think microsoft are doing all the right things um they've they've shown four big games including a third party game coming out to their consoles this year yeah uh but it, it's funny because it seems not all these games aren't going to appeal to everyone. Like it's the reality. You, yeah. you might've watched a showcase and be like, Oh my God, like this is all bullshit. And that's fine. But I still think it's good of Microsoft to be like, here's a roadmap. Uh, you've got these four big games, game pass day one, and it won't be the only games they release. Like there will, I'm sure there will be more updates throughout the year. Mm. Oh, I sincerely hope so. Maybe I'm speaking rubbish. I just um, think the worst thing they could do is like set this up as like these are the games for 2024 and then like two of them get delayed to 2024. Oh yeah, no. Um, listen, yeah. Phil Spencer, do not do that. Um, yeah, I, I, they, I do, they have to deliver. I do have to think that come. I mean, I know E3 is dead, but come June there is an update on another game or two that maybe come out. Yeah, this probably. Year. I would expect. I highly doubt this is like Xbox being like, "Cool, this is what we got this year. Enjoy." Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm I'm almost certain there's there's something like. You know, we've been hearing so much about a new Gears. Mm. Um, you know, Coalition hasn't put out anything no. in a stupidly long time. Mm. Um, so stuff like that, you know. Uh, a new Forza will almost certainly be announced for this year. So mm. maybe even Fable. Fable, yeah. Fable's kicking around there somewhere. Um, yeah. Cool. So that was that news. In other news this week, uh, what do you want to move? To? Oh, let's just touch on this quickly. 
to nobody's surprise, hundreds of devel- developers say they're working on the Nintendo Switch 2. Um, I, mm. I had a quick look at this article. This came from the game. GDC. Yeah, GDC, where 3,000 people were polled and 240 of those people said that they are developing for the Nintendo Switch 2, uh, which is, I don't know, like just under 10%. So not surprising really, but very exciting nonetheless. Um, the Switch, Switch originally launched in 2015. It's been, you know, it's going on nine years now. It's long overdue for Nintendo to release. Not long overdue, but wait, did you it, did you say nine years? It came wait, not 2015. Sorry, I'm speaking rubbish. 2017. No, it is. It's, 20, it's 2017. Sorry, still seven years is a long time to have the old faithful Switch. I don't know where I got 2015 from. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not I sure was, either. <laughs> I, was, I was so, I said it with such authority that no one would dare doubt me. And then you're like, listen. <laughs> I, need, I will I need, not have incorrect I to, facts. I need yeah. to rein you in here. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm very keen to see what the Switch 2 is. And it should be out. If rumors and trends. I, and I would be true. shocked if this thing's not announced by March. Yeah. Like, I was, I'm almost certain <laughs> this is a... If we don't get a, least, like, yeah. if we don't get a sequel to, I can't remember her name, but the original lady in the first Switch uh, announcement, the what Karen, was the was on, it, on the, to, it don't wasn't it Karen, it was it Karen? Yeah, Karen who, who took, who took switch the Switch to the party, to the party. Man, if I don't get a yeah. sequel to that, where Karen takes her Switch to to a party, then Nintendo, that that trailer, that trailer is an all time fantastic trailer. It's it just is so good, so good at like. Because that ultimately was a teaser trailer. We didn't, yeah. Nintendo only like broke open what the Switch did like a few months later in January. That yes. came out in like October. But that one and a half minute trailer sold the exact scenario that a Switch would work. It's like, it's a hybrid console. Mm. You pop it into this little dock and it shows up on your screen. You take it out and you've got your game. You can play with it in the park. You can take the control. It told you everything about the console that you needed to, to get excited about it. But also, like, it, it, it wasn't just like a, yeah, we're working on a new console. We'll tell you more about it in four months. And then you're just sitting there like, oh, God, okay, well, we haven't seen anything. So I'm hoping the new Switch teaser is Does that. similar. But also, so interesting, I'm pretty sure it will be. reflecting back now from a modern point of view of the Switch, kind of just established the whole handheld trend. We've got the Steam Deck yeah, now, absolutely. the Switch Rock, and... I think a lot of hardware companies going, oh, damn, there's a hunger for this thing. So. I mean, the, 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 I still recall seeing that guy. He was playing Breath of the Wild, obviously, like in a park, and he, walk, mm. he walks home. He gets home, he just slots it in, and he's playing it on his TV. And that like little like, light bulb moment in the brain is like, okay, mm. I understand what this thing is I, and why this thing is so cool. It was such a weird thing because I think at the time it was also the comparison of... You know, it, we had, what, the, the Wii U and then uh, the DS, the 3DS at the time. Yeah. And I think it is just this weird disconnect of no handhold just cannot be as powerful as a home console. Exactly. And, and to yeah. be fair, the Switch is not a powerful console. However, what they've done with it is made, they've, they've just blurred those lines. And I think mm. that's why that, that dream, they sort of like, holy shit, you can have a home console on the go and then they actually delivered on it. It just, yeah, it's... I think it was a generational leap because Breath of the Wild was for the yes, Wii U, Wii you well. know, and there was like, no, you can take that exact experience on the go mm. now. And that's like a big, like, mind-blown sort yeah. of moment, you know. It's weird looking back now, like, well, of course you can do that. I mean, we've got the Steam Deck, like, the Steam yeah. Deck. <laughs> but at the time, it was like, oh, my God, that is unreal. Uh, very excited to see what they've got lined up. And I, I wouldn't say no to, you know some uh, uh, tastier Nintendo graphics. Um, I suppose, should we bounce to the other thing you and I both really want this year? Uh, Elden Ring Steam Elden DLC Rang. update suggests from software reading for Shadow of the Earth announcement. Um, just yeah, this- so this is a weird one from this week because like, you know, very late last year from software said that the the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC wouldn't get an like a significant update at the end of the year because everyone's expecting it to pop up at Keeley's Game Awards. Mm. Um, and I that, thought it'd know, be there for sure. Yeah, I thought it would be there until FromSoft came out and basically were like, "Yeah, it's progressing smoothly," but that's all they have to say. Mm. And I was like, oh, "Okay, this is probably still a year away." But now, uh, the 
Steam listing for the game um, has received a new DLC listing as part of an update. There's nothing that's on the listing, but the fact that the game was updated to have a DLC category amended to its Steam DB um, entry is interesting. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of further speculation that it is being planned for release in February to align with the game's two year anniversary. Please, so from Zopi, don't that, do this. Feb's too busy. Now, that, that, <laughs> the, you know, when people just say that out loud, you're like, okay, well, you can guess that and, you yeah. know, probably wrong. But recall that last year, uh, Thrustmaster, the peripherals maker, they said that they would have a batch of their new controllers arriving in February with, quote, uh, to quote sync with the new Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion release. And they said that out of context oh. months ago. Oh my god. Well, there so go. I, you know, this this combined with the sudden like DB change and it, it's looking like something could happen. Who knows? Um there's also these weird I don't know if they're weird, but I've heard them mentioned now in a few places reports that this might actually not be the only expansion for the game, that there is a second one actually being worked on for Good later God. down the line. Well, so yeah. Didn't Dark Souls 3 have two DLCs, or am I imagining? I don't know. The I think Dark Souls pre- 2 had two. I feel like the, they have had games that have had multiple they have. DLCs. It but just, it, it also depends that the, the extent is... You know, those those expansions were relatively small. I feel like Bloodborne's is quite significant mm. and Dark Souls 3 was quite significant. This one apparently is a whole new island mm. uh, that is being added to the map. So I think this is going to be huge in Listen, comparison to, to just the previous ones. Give so. me the DLC. <laughs> just, I, I, I'll, I'll consume that DLC. I love Alden Ring. I know you do too. And I, there are millions mm-hmm. of other pe- people who are just j- jonesing at the, you know. Can't wait content. to hear that title screen music again. Oh my gosh. Boom. Mm. It's, it's too iconic. <laughs> so um, shivers. Uh, and then you hear that music again when you fight the final boss. God. Too good. It's a top God. 10 gaming moment. Yeah, um, top 10. In other news, Street Fighter 6 is chugging along nicely. Uh, if you enjoy... Capcom's Fighter, there's a new character named Ed launching in Feb. Sorry, who, that's Dante. That's uh, hundred percent Dante. Uh Dante's <laughs> somebody Dante from Devil May Cry somebody is joining Street Fighter 6. Ed cosplaying as Dante. Apparently, this is an existing character. I thought it was a brand new character, but Ed is uh I don't know when he was launched, but coming well, I don't know when he was added to the Street Fighter franchise as a whole, but he is coming soon i think i don't know if there's actually a date i really do like this trailer description that's been trans uh, transcribed yet ed the psycho powered bad boy of boxing (laughs) brackets with a heart heart, (laughs) is almost ready to show you he's the true high def picture of strength okay the fuck does that mean calm down what does that mean is he the 4k of strength He's, yeah, he's the high, not the high. He's the 8K of he's strength. The 8K of strength. So that's cool. I know Jeff and Umar are very excited. But for he's this. got a heart. Don't he's, forget he's about it. He's got a heart in brackets. No. He's, you know, he's not <laughs> only brackets. not only is he 8K, he's got HDR as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make heart. this up. <laughs> heart. Um, Definition, realism. I don't know. Fuck. Love to see it. Uh, then in other news, Power World. We're gonna to get to Power World. Okay, so I populated the news yesterday, um, yesterday evening, and this was the news article that I saw at the time. Power World is currently Steam's best-selling game, passes three hundred and fifty thousand concurrent users. Okay, then look at the time here. This is eight seventeen a.m. PST. Then. Not even an hour and a bit later, Paul Wald has sold, and I know they're two different things. One is concurrent players and one is copy sold, but still, Paul Wald has sold over a million copies and its servers can't keep up. So for those of you who That's don't kind of know, insane when you consider it's on Game Pass. Yeah, it's on Game Pass as well. Uh, mm. Paul Wald, for those of you who don't know, is basically a, a, a look, Game Pokemon with guns. but it's a Pokemon clone 
worth guns. And that if you watch it's a also trailer, an MMO, so. yeah, if, if you watch a trailer, you'll be like, oh my god, this is Pokemon with guns. It doesn't play like a Pokemon necessarily. Um, this game has the most bonkers trailers, and now that it's out for people to finally play. And good God, people are loving it. People have snapped it up. People are playing it. Yeah. I, I, I haven't seen any gameplay myself, I, but people who are playing it are enjoying it. People I know. I kind of want to try it out now. Mm. Like, it's not just a dumb thing. You know what I mean? I just, I kind of want to, I, I, I've seen anecdotally, like people being like, this has got actually some really cool, interesting spins on Pokemon combat and stuff mm. like that. Like, then it's it's not just unironically reaching these numbers. It seems to actually be it's, yeah. earning this, you know? So I wanted to ask, is this a full release? It's not a, an early access No, thing. it's it's an early access, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because I was sure. Let me just double check on Steam. Because on, on, on oh, Xbox, yeah. it says game preview. The, yeah, the game is currently in Steam early access and Xbox game preview. Yeah. Okay. That is hilarious. Yeah, because there, there, there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of poor reporting around that because there was a lot of headlines being like Power World is out on this day and it's like going into one point zero and it's like no, that's not at no, all. No, that's what why was I was confused because I thought it was yeah. early access. So that's cool. Is on Game Pass. Uh, I'd love to try this. Um, maybe maybe one day I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, and then last piece of news. Until Dawn, movie in the works from Annabelle, a creation director and writer. Uh, it's this, a hard nope from me. This is very strange given that, okay, so those you don't know, Until Dawn is a narrative horror game with actual actors and actresses where you basically play through a horror story and you make decisions, you know, and you, you watch things unfold. What, what happens in the movie now? There's going to be a definitive story. Yeah. Do they use the same actors and actresses? Like I, I don't know. It's 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 just weird because we're clearly seeing this trend now of, hey, video game movies make money. Let's make every damn video game into a movie. <laughs> so yeah, I think that is literally what's happening now. Mm. I, I, there's so many movies being announced. Mm. Um, there was another one this week. It was until you Dawn mentioned and one. Th- there was another horror game, something Martha. Um, it was like an indie horror game that That's not made a lot of, yeah, made a lot of buzz because it was like very um, hectic. I don't know. It's had some like hectic scenes or moments, but it was actually like not a great game. Now it's also being made into a movie. So wild. Yeah. Uh, Martha is dead. I think. Also, I just want to point out, uh, this is Sony Pictures, Sony Art here, just making everything. So we there's actually a list here. Um, I mean, this is stuff that's come out. We have The Last of Us, the Twisted Metal series for Peacock, and then they are still making the God of War and Horizon TV shows. I think it was... I keep forgetting those are coming, yeah. Yeah, but I think it was um, The Last of Us. The Horizon one, I think, is actually further along than God of War. Oh, really? I really? But I, yeah. I, th- I think the, the Last of Us show is the one that really oh, put yeah. it on the map for a lot of people because then, I mean... Even saying that, like, I think The Witcher did the same thing a few years prior of, hey, there's a Witcher mm. Netflix show, and people go, oh, my God, this is based on a game. I'm going to buy the game. The Last of Us show was one for one. Hey, this is the game in yeah, the series. Absolutely. And people watched the series and went, oh, my God, I can play through this. <laughs> yeah. So there's clearly a thing I, there of, yeah. I do think that uh, Horizon is going to have a much tougher chance with that oh, sort 100%. of... Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I think God of War is probably the next best bet. Like, people yeah, love I, mythologies and, like, hard-hitting stories. Horizon is just, like, your robots. But but even from... it's, I think more from a story point of view, it makes sense, right? Like, The Last of Us is this very compelling narrative. God of War is this... You know, oh my God, it's, yes, it's an action game, but there's this compelling narrative about Kratos and Atreus. Horizon, not to say that there's not a good narrative, but it's an open world and it feels, I don't know mm. how that's going to translate um, into a show. Like, I just don't see. Yeah, I, think, I, I really don't see that um, working. I think, I think well, visually, I give like, I don't know, in terms of budget and whatever, what they've got, but if they could make it look good and make the world interesting to watch, then... Yeah, maybe. But it's I think that's also the the most challenging thing is like that world is so <laughs> fascinating <laughs> to me because of the intersection of this like 
tribalism and technology yes that you know there's so many variations of that like bringing that to tv i think first it would just be super expensive also and yeah but best looking arguably one of the best looking games on the playstation but yeah i don't know it, how that looks in real life it could just be a, like a <laughs> cg mess like uh, yeah, honestly it could be so i don't so, know we'll, yeah. we'll see Though those vibrant colors pop on my beautiful screen in game, sure. don't know how they're going to pop IRL. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so a fair bit of news this week, but that is all of the news. Do you think they should just get Laura Bailey to play Aloy in real life? It is yes. Laura Bailey, right? I think it's, yeah. Uh, is it not Ashley Birch? Oh, it's Ashley Birch. Sorry, yeah. you're, you're right. Laura Bailey is Abby. Yeah. In Last of Us, yeah. It's it's funny because I don't know if you've ever watched the Apple TV series Mythic Quest. No, but I um, think Ashley Birch is, is in there. there as like she's like a game tester in there, and every <laughs> time she talks, I just hear Aloy. Aloy. <laughs> yeah, she's very good in that series. That's so. amazing. Yeah.